News Talk 94.5 WPTI, 96.7 FM WTOB. You're listening to The Wealth Guardians with Doug Ray, helping you to retire the job and keep the paycheck. I'm your host, Doug Ray, and with me is Bryce Payne. Today, we're going to be talking about picking sides in important financial debates. Do you concur? Hey, Bryce, good morning. Good morning, Doug. I, uh, I concur, and I, uh, I've picked a side here in the recent uh, Stanley Cup thing, as you can tell. Uh, I can tell. You've got I, your jersey on. Give a quick shout-out to the Avs here. Go Avs. Let's, uh, let's keep the uh, streak going here. But, uh, yeah, Doug, good to be back with you. I was up in Detroit here for a few days, 100 degrees there. It's pretty warm here as well. But uh, Yeah, but that was a good seminar. you got some nuggets to bring boy, home to us. Boy, sure was. I look forward to us uh, enhancing the, uh, the services and whatnot we can bring to our our, our clients here at the Wealth Guardian. So very excited about all that uh, all that I learned there and to share it with the rest of the team. Oh, good. Doug, let's go ahead and get started on the show. But before we do that, we've got our Wealth Guardian service salute that we want to get to. And just as a reminder to everybody out there, what this is, is every week we here at the Wealth Guardians honor and thank our military and our first responders and their families with their sacrifice, for their sacrifice in serving our community and making our safety and freedom their mission. So each week we want to salute a specific individual. And as a reminder, if you know someone we should be recognizing here on the show, please just email our team at salute at the Wealth Guardians, and we will be in touch with you and get all the information we need to uh, honor your loved one here on the show. And uh, Doug, who are we introducing for the uh, Wealth Guardian Service Salute this week? Today I'm honored to salute Army Chief Warrant Officer Robert Ray. Uh, Rob is uh, not a kin of uh, Garrett myself, but Rob is a uh, client of the Wealth Guardians down in our Charlotte office. Rob was a career Army officer. He served three tours in Vietnam, four times in West Germany. Wow. In fact, 16 years of his career was spent serving overseas. Oof. After his military service, he was employed in the intelligence sector. Rob currently lives in South Carolina with his wife, Janice, and is a proud dad and active grandfather of several granddaughters. And one aside, Bryce, he and I have some very interesting conversations when we're together okay. about Soviet submarines, because ah. he did a lot of intel work on them. And I was in a special unit when I first was in the squadron called Bear Trap, okay. which gathered a lot of that data that he analyzed. Oh, very good. Yeah, so that's pretty kindred cool. Kindred spirits there, in yeah. a sense. All right. Well, thank you for your service. And uh, uh, Robert Ray, thank you for your service as well. And Doug, uh, let's uh, let's dive into the show here. What, All right. What, what does this mean? Do you concur picking sides in important financial debates? What are we talking about? Here? Well, there's no end of debates in the financial services, as you well know. I've noticed that. Yeah. I mean, everybody's got an opinion, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> Among other things, yes. So we, have an opinion. we've picked out a few here that seem to rise to the top uh, quite often. And we're going to, uh, you know, we're going to hit them and see uh, what's true and what's not true. Yeah. Well, you know, we're going to try to pick sides in some important financial debates, whether we're talking about bonds to life insurance, credit card debt starting Social Security. What we're going to do here is we're going to propose several different topics to see which sides of the debates you and your financial advisor might should probably fall on. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get started here. And here, here, so here's the topic. Here's how this works. We're just going to say this, a statement. It's a blanket statement. And then you think for a second whether or not you agree with this or if you disagree with it. You should always pay off your house as soon as you can. Give, her, give her everyone out there just a second to think about that. You yeah. should always pay off your house as soon as you can. You know, I got mixed feelings about this. Personally, me, I would like to have my house paid off going into retirement. But you don't have to have your house paid off in retirement. Um, interesting side note here is where I live down in, in South Charlotte, um, I've got two retired American captains. One on one side, one on the other side. Okay. And um, the one on one side has his house completely paid off. Okay. The one that's on the other side, a little bit down the road from us, mortgaged up to the hilt. Really? But not worried a bit about it. Okay. He's got the income to support it. So, hey, that's okay. All right. How uh, old is he? More or less. He's 75 ish. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, it's really a personal preference item. It is. Uh, there's, a, there's something that you, there's, there's things that you can quantify in numbers and put on spreadsheets, and then there's certain aspects to uh, retirement planning that you can't put on a spreadsheet. Exactly. But I will say this 
you know, you and I have done thousands of retirement plans. And this is one of the more common questions that comes yeah. up. And what we find is those folks who have paid off their mortgage, well, they've got a lot more extra spendable income, meaning that they can travel more, Absolutely. be with the grandkids more, be more charitable, uh, whatever they want to do with that extra money. Right. Because it's nice having an extra couple thousand dollars a month not going to the bank, right? No question about that. Uh, we can help you figure out here at the Wealth Guardians if, uh, in your specific case, in short, Doug, as always, it depends. It depends. Uh, it Our depends. favorite answer. Yep. But uh, we can help you figure out here at the Wealth Guardians if what side of the debate your specific situation would have you falling on in that question. All you got to do is reach out to us, 336-391-3409, and we would be happy to uh, see if we can uh, add Add any insight into that question or many other questions that we tackle when helping somebody prepare for retirement. All right, so uh, we've got that one taken care of. Let's move on to the next one. Individual bonds are better than bond funds. All right, Doug, I'm going to let you handle that one. Well, I'm going to pull the old favorite answer. It depends. Okay. Um, here's how I feel about it. Number one, if, if, if push comes to serve, I'd say individual bonds are better than bond funds. Okay. You can control the duration a yep. lot better, uh, certainly the income flow, uh, and you can sell the bonds whenever you want to. The thing about bond funds that I don't like is the taxability part of it. You can't control what that money manager is doing with that bond fund. Um, he's going to be buying and selling bonds, and you don't know what's going to end up on your 1099 at the end of the year. Um, the other thing, bond funds can be more expensive to own than a bond itself. And, um, you know, there's also ETF bond funds you could mm -hmm. get. They would be my choice over a bond mutual fund. But if push comes to serve, I, I would uh, uh, I would go with uh, the individual bond portfolio and structure duration, and maybe Laterum or something like that. It's good. It's got to be custom to your specific situation, which uh, bond funds is a little bit harder to do that through. Uh, yeah. I mean, there are there are uh, short duration bond funds, there are high yield bond funds, and, and municipal bond funds, tax free bond funds. But if if you know what you're doing, you could probably customize a portfolio for yourself and your specific situation better than. And you could find some bond fund that's supposed to represent you and your needs. Exactly. Um, yeah, and then there's, uh, of course, we, we could always go into the conversation about uh, I-bonds right now as well. That's, yeah. Uh, that's really an opportunity out there that hasn't been like uh, like it is right now for quite a long time. So that's another type of individual bond uh, that somebody could own out there right now that might make sense for them. All right, so there's that one. Uh, if you're just tuning in, you're listening to The Wealth Guardians, and we're talking about do you concur, picking sides, in important financial debates. I'm Bryce Payne. With me is Doug Ray. And uh, let's go ahead and move on to the third one now. Nobody needs life insurance once they've retired. Do hmm. you concur? You're listening out there. Let me say that sentence again. Nobody needs life insurance once they've retired. Do you concur or do you not concur? And Doug, when I hear a question like that, I think back to my taking tests in high school or even college. Whenever it said nobody or everybody, mm -hmm. uh, kind of a little indicator that probably it's a no or false exactly. on that one. So yeah. nobody needs life insurance once they've retired. What are your thoughts on that, Doug? Well, you know, um, I, I just think you just can't just paint a broad brush and say nobody needs life insurance. <laughs> I agree. Certainly there's going to be cases where they don't need the life insurance. And we see plenty of that. But, you know, when you retire, doesn't even if you have no debt whatsoever, that doesn't mean that, that it's not prudent to carry some life insurance, especially if you've got legacy goals. And obviously, if you have an estate tax issue, you've got to have something there to pay the tax when the last spouse passes. Right. Now, again, right now, we've got, what is it, 11 and almost $12 million per person estate tax exemption? Yes. So you have to have a fairly high net worth to, situation to need the irrevocable life insurance trust to pay the taxes on the estate. But to, just to broadly say, no, nobody needs life insurance, uh, I disagree with that completely. Oh, I, I completely disagree with that. And the way to approach life insurance, I found, is Identify the problem first. What problem is it you're trying to solve by buying life insurance? And if you've identified that problem, what kind of life insurance? Is it whole? Is it universal? Is it term? What kind of life insurance is going to best suit your needs? Kind of work at the problem that way rather than some people just come to us and say, hey, should I get life insurance? 
Well, let's, let's see if we can identify the problem first, and then we'll figure out what kind of life insurance might solve that problem, I think is generally right. the better way to uh, look at that. Let's, uh, let's, Doug, I think let's go ahead and get to our trivia question Yeah, let's here. do trivia, and then we'll get back to it in the second segment. We'll come back to the break. We've got a lot more of those coming up to us. A couple good ones, actually. We do. All right. It is time for the Wealth Guardians trivia question, and let's see if we can stump Doug. Doug. Uh-oh. On June 22nd, 1990, the crossing area at the Berlin Wall between East and West Berlin was finally dismantled after the fall of the wall in 1989. What was the name of this famous crossing area? Oh, my word. Oh, come on now, Doug. You're going to think about this through the break. And I, if was, you, I was just over there a few years if ago. If you don't get this, you are going to be really embarrassed. Uh, <laughs> stick, through the, uh, stick, through us, stick with us through the break, folks, and let's see if we've embarrassed Doug or if he's going to get that, uh, that famous uh, dinger instead of the buzzer here. This is Bryce Payne. With me is Doug Ray. The show is The Wealth Guardians, helping you retire the job and keep the paycheck. And this is News Talk 94.5 WPTI. And this is 96.7 FM WTOB. News Talk 94.5 WPTI. 96.7 FM WTOB. You're listening to The Wealth Guardians with Doug Ray, helping you retire the job and keep the paycheck. I'm Bryce Payne, along with the man himself, Doug Ray. And this segment, we are talking about... Do you concur? Picking sides in important financial debates. Same thing we were talking about in the first segment. Thank you for sticking around with us for the segment. We're going to get to our uh, trivia question here in just a moment and see if we stump Doug. But before we do that, I've got a question for you. Are you you more or less five to seven years from retirement? Maybe you just retired. And you're kind of figuring out that, you know, maybe maybe I haven't really truly confirmed that I've making that I am making all the best decisions for retirement. If that's the case, if I've just described you, then I want you to pick up the phone and call us because we offer a no cost, no obligation, second opinion review of your current financial plan and financial situation. And we want to help you see if we can retire the job while keeping that paycheck. But the onus is on you. You've got to pick up that phone and you've got to dial us at 336-391-3409. That's 336-391-3409. We are financial planners, we're fiduciaries, and we are retirement specialists, and we'd love to see how we can help you in your retirement planning needs and goals. All right, it's time to get to the trivia question here and see if we stump Doug this week. Doug, on June 22nd, 1990, the crossing area at the Berlin Wall between East and West Berlin was finally dismantled after the fall of the wall in 1989. What was this name of this famous crossing area? You know, this is killing me. I, I guess I still have COVID head. Um, and I'll tell you why it's killing me is we actually went over there four years ago. My, my wife's family is from Germany. They're Rhesus and the, back in those days, it, pronounce it Rasa. So my younger son, Adam, is big into genealogy. So he found a, a relation to the Reese side of our clan, and we went to visit. Oh, wow. It was in Turnovitz. I remember you talking about this. And, and the Degum Wall went right between uh, where this family lived. And they were still there, right? Uh, they were there, and they were telling us stories about when the wall came down, how it was just a big block party for, for weeks at a time when the East Germans came over. And, you know, it was just a fun re... Uh, uniting and everything, yeah. but yeah, you got me. I'm stumped. Garrett, what about you over there? You know it? I do not. Garrett uh, is not on mic here, but he's here in the studio with us. He is drawing a blank as well, so let's do this. For Doug and <laughs> for Garrett. The name of the area, I know a lot of you out there uh, know this. The name of the crossing area was Check Point. Charlie? There you go. Ah. Checkpoint Charlie. Come on. You already buzzed me. Don't uh, it. <laughs> it was established in August 1961. Uh, only foreigners were allowed to cross through it. And today, that checkpoint, in, including the famous sign that says you are leaving the American sector, is a tourist attraction in the Allied Museum 
in Berlin, while a replica guardhouse sits in the same spot as a true tourist attraction. Doug, when you were over there, you probably saw that yeah. uh, guardhouse. Yeah, yeah. So, um, all right, well, uh, the streak didn't last that long. Doug got it last week. He didn't get it this week. We'll, uh, I'll have to dim it down a little bit for you for, the, for next week and see if we can get it there. So let's move back <laughs> on, to our, on to our subjects here. Do you concur? Picking sides in important financial debates. If you are tuned into us in the first segment, what we're doing here is giving you a blanket statement and asking you out there, the listener, whether you agree with us or not. And then Doug and I are giving you our thoughts on it. And we talked about uh, paying off the house as soon as you can, uh, individual bonds being better than bond funds, how important is life insurance in retirement. So let's get on to our next one here. Doug, you know what? It's better to have a fee-based advisor instead of a commission-based broker. Well, you know, at, um, at face value, that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? I think so. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm wondering where you're going to go with this, because okay. I, I think that that's kind of a, a, that one I might just flat out agree with. Okay. So, and I do too, to an extent, because you're a fiduciary, if you're a fee-based advisor. That's right. And we do that. Yes. Okay. But if that's all you are, okay. you're not a holistic planner either, because there are some financial products that you need, especially going into retirement, that are not fee-based such as we had talked about life insurance in the last segment. Yes, absolutely. A we, fee based a fee based advisor we're not necessarily going to mention that to you. And long term care. Long term care. Super important. Very important. For retirees. And the reason that's so important when we create uh, just to go off on a little side here, the reason that's so important we can create financial plans all day long. There's always going to be unexpected things that happen that could blow up that financial plan. And the most obvious, the most common of that could be unexpected health care costs. So if you have the certain types of long term care coverage all that is is a layer of insurance to to uh, help keep your financial plan on track and to help uh, keep it on track so that nothing's going to blow that up. So let me add this. <clears throat> Please. So all of our listeners out there, if you hear commercials that talk about advisors who basically say they're fee-based only, this is what that means. All they do is manage money. In other words, all they're doing is moving chess pieces on a chess set. That's it. They're not talking about long-term care. They're not talking about your Social Security. They're not talking about how to bring your pension in if you've got a pension. All they're doing is moving money around day by day. And you can be a fiduciary and do that, right. but you wouldn't be a financial planner right. in doing that. And that's what we were both of those. We're a financial planning firm and we are obligated to act on the fiduciary standard. So yeah, we'll, we'll say it's better to have a fee-based advisor instead of a commission-based broker. Yes, but we're going to put a little caveat with that, that you would still want something more than just a fee-based advisor. All right. Good, uh, good way to, uh, to uh, finish that one off there, Doug. The next one. Annuities are a ripoff. Well, there is a very well-known um, advisor uh -huh. out there that uh, spends hundreds of millions of dollars a year on TV commercials and ads uh, that say, essentially, uh, I hate annuities and you should too. That's right. He says also, I hate mutual funds and you should too. Um, but he is not a financial planner either. It's a fiduciary. He's a fiduciary, but again, all he does is move chips on a chessboard, period. Correct, correct. Now, are annuities a ripoff? Heck no. Some are. No they doubt can about be. it. Absolutely. Yes. But when used properly in an overall retirement portfolio, annuities can be a very solid structure. We use them. We use them as a bond replacement. You know, right now, if you own bonds, you are getting your head handed to you because mm -hmm. interest rates are going up. The bond portfolio price is going down. The indexed annuity replicates what bonds could do 20 years ago, give you safety, give you a nice 5, 6, 7 percent annual rate of return on average. And, you know, you don't have to worry about them. But, Doug, there's one specific type you, you can you can. In broad speaking, there's more or less three different types of annuities out there. There's uh, uh, variable annuities, there's fixed annuities, and there's fixed index annuities. Mm -hmm. Variable annuities we wouldn't touch with a 100-yard pole. Right. Um, fixed annuities can have their place. They're basically like a CD, but they are, have, generally have better rates than what CDs do. And then there's fixed index annuities. That's more or less what we go to is the bond replacement mm -hmm. side of a vehicle. doesn't mean that we'll be doing that 10 years from now. It depends on what bonds are doing at that 
point in time. But for right now, if you've got bonds in your portfolio, either you're not getting anything out of that part of your portfolio as far as income, or you are, but you're taking a lot of risk in junk bonds and high yield bonds to get those returns out of it. And, and fixed index annuities is a way to uh, square that circle where you can get some decent returns, some decent income out of it, still have the stability and, um, and uh, safety in it without going into uh, into junk bonds or high yield bonds. So. By, by the way, um, if you look at your portfolio and you see a, a fund in there that says high yield bond fund, that is a junk bond fund. And junk bonds are have lost more value than the stock market has up to date. Yes, they're, uh, they, they, you're taking a lot of risk with that. You could wake up one morning and not see them there. If you're just tuning in and you're listening to The Wealth Guardians, and today we're talking about picking sides in important financial debates, do you concur? So, Doug, uh, let's move on here. We've got time for one more. Um, you'll be in a lower tax bracket in retirement, so it's best to defer taxes now and pay them later. Well, you know, that was very common knowledge back uh, when I got started in this business. I mean, it makes sense, right? I mean, you retire, you're not making that big income anymore. So it stands to reason you're going to be in a lower tax bracket. But what we're actually seeing is that's not necessarily true because people have nice 401ks and IRAs that they're taking distributions on. The way the tax code is set up now, your Social Security can easily be taxed uh, because of the thresholds. And it's getting easier and easier for that to be taxed. It, it is. And then and then there's the Medicare uh, uh, IRMA taxes mm -hmm. on, on those. So, yeah, you could actually find yourself in a situation in retirement where perhaps you're paying as much, if not more, in taxes. And unfortunately, when a spouse passes away, that remaining spouse may actually see their tax rates go up that is true because they're now on individual filing individually yep. yeah so there's a it's it's a general conventional wisdom that that is the case but as you say doug more and more often that's not going to be the case and it's really a matter of you sitting down with a financial planner to talk through your tax situation now and in retirement and you've got to look ahead and we've got the software that helps our clients look ahead what I mean by that is an investment advisor is not really going to be concerned about these topics even if they're a fiduciary but a financial planner particularly one who's a fiduciary is going to be concerned with all of these topics that we've talked about we want to help you figure out what is going to be your tax situation next year and what's it going to be like five years from now and ten years from now because there are things you can do if you have that foresight to change your portfolio up or to alter it or prepare it for uh, taxes in the future and there are things that you can do I mean we all know that we've got to pay taxes but uh, let me see a show of hands out there who's happy paying more taxes than you have to Doug, I didn't see a single hand out no, there. No, I didn't see up. that either. All right. So you don't want to do that. But what you do want to do in order to not do that is to pick up the phone and give a fiduciary retirement planning re retirement specialist a call. And I've got that number for you. It's 336-391-3409. 336-391-3409. Zero nine. We'd love to sit down with you and see what uh, help and advice we can give you. It's generally a four meeting process, Doug. When somebody comes in and sits down with us, we've got to ask a whole bunch of questions of them so that we understand their financial picture. What we're going to do in the second meeting is we're going to ha have run a number of different analyses on their current portfolio. We're going to go over those analyses to see where the strengths are in their portfolio and see if we've identified any weak links. And then if there are some weak links, maybe your fees are too high, maybe your tax structure is not correct, maybe uh, your risk is too high, not in line with your risk tolerance, maybe you just are not set up for the growth potential that you thought you were, we're going to make some recommendations in that meeting. We're going to go over in deep detail what our recommendations are. And then in our fourth meeting, we're going to hand you a binder that has risk analysis, fee analysis, fund analysis, all of that nine yards for you. Take home no cost, no obligation for any of that other than your time of coming and sitting down with us. But like it is every weekend, the ball is in your court. You've got to reach out to us. And you did say no cost, right? No cost no and, and no obligation. Yeah. 
That's a deal, folks. That is an absolute deal. We do more thorough work than I would say any other advisor in the area. You know, so take us up on the offer. Take us up on the offer. That seminar that I mentioned that I was at uh, up in Detroit, the advisor that was talking to us about his uh, business structure charges $5,000 for that same analysis. Yeah, yeah. We don't charge at all. 336-391-3409. Uh, it's been a pleasure sitting down with you. We look forward to sitting down with you here next week. This is Bryce Payne. With me has been Doug Ray. The show is The Wealth Guardians, helping you retire the job and keep the paycheck. And this has been News Talk 94.5 WPTI. And this has been 96.7 FM WTOB.